I think everyone who watches movies has one or more films that they always put off watching. And it could be for one or more reasons. It could be they don't like the genre. It could be they don't like a particular actor or actors. Or it could be the film simply garnered too many accolades and praise to the point it becomes overhyped in your own mind. For me, Goodwill Hunting was a perfect example of that. It came out in 1997 when I was about 13, but I didn't sit down to watch it until I was about the age of 20. I had always just thought it would be some bullshit melodrama, so I never bothered with it, despite its critical acclaim. But how wrong I was. It's a beautiful film and I'm really excited to take a deep dive into it. So before I get into this, there will be spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen this film yet, then please check it out before watching the review. Directed by Gus Van Sant, written by and starring Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, this late 90s drama tells the story of Will Hunting, a 20-year-old South Boston lad who works as a janitor at MIT. He's not had and currently doesn't lead the best of lives. He lives alone in a bare-bones low-rent house. He's an orphan and a survivor of severe physical abuse at the hands of former foster families, and in his spare time he hangs around with his exceptionally flawed but viciously loyal friends, getting drunk, getting into trouble, and generally wasting his days away. He's also a fucking genius, with an extraordinary high aptitude for extremely complex mathematics. After getting into a street fight, he's arrested and assaults the arresting officer, and after being processed, he's let out pending a hearing. At MIT, highly decorated maths professor Jerry Lambeau, played by Stellan Skarsgård, puts a maths problem up on the board for the students to try and solve. While at work, Will begins solving it and is caught by Jerry, who initially thinks Will is graffitiing the board and a small verbal confrontation occurs, but then he sees that Will was actually solving the problem and is left completely stunned. In the meantime, while Will and his friends are drinking in the student bar, he meets Skyler, a student at Harvard played by Mini Driver. After Will embarrasses a cocky jumped up Harvard student who was trying to impose his intellect on his best friend Chucky, she strikes up a conversation with Will and gives him a phone number at the end of the night. Jerry tracks Will down, eager to find out more about him and discover that he's on parole. He observes Will's hearing which doesn't go well and Will is sent to jail. He bails him out and tells him that the judge has agreed to release him under two conditions that he's placed under his supervision and must meet with him during the week to work on complex maths and that he must see a therapist. Will reacts defensively to the second condition. Jerry sets him up with numerous therapists, but Will rebuts every one of them and makes it impossible for them to work with him. As a last resort, Jerry contacts an old college friend turned therapist, Sean McGuire, played by the late, great Robin Williams. Jerry and Sean have a tenuous relationship, but Sean agrees to do the sessions, and from here we follow the two of them as their relationship begins to develop, as well as other relationships in the film. Goodwill Hunting won two Oscars, one for Best Original Screenplay by Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, and the other for Robin Williams for Best Supporting Actor, and both awards could not have been more deserved. Damon and Affleck's screenplay is nothing short of a masterpiece. It meticulously carves and sculpts every main character with laser-like precision and builds their layers piece by piece with patience and skill. It never rushes to give us a valuable piece of information. Instead, the script flows organically from scene to scene, giving us exactly the right amount of screen time, dialogue and visual storytelling needed to develop these characters. Its dialogue is sharp and snappy, but relatable and realistic. Its depictions of friendship, rivalry, vulnerability and resolve are some of the screenplay's strongest pillars. It was clearly a labour of love for this pair and it deserves its high praise. Matt Damon brings his A-game to this character. Will is a deeply troubled young man due to his horrible and cruel upbringing. He's constantly on guard, unable to truly open up to anyone around him, including his closest friends who he trusts and respects above all else. Although he has this amazing gift that could take him anywhere in life he wanted, he refuses to go for it, instead content with the life that he has now, because this life is the only safety and sureness he's probably ever had or felt. At any point in his life when he's met with change or the opportunity for something better, he reacts with a tidal wave of aggression and a defensiveness. One scene that shows this is when Will and Skylar are together in bed and she asks him to go to California with her. Up until this point, their relationship has been going relatively smooth, but this prompt from Skylar makes Will react with panic and anxiety. He starts reeling off all the bad things that could go wrong and that Skylar might later regret a decision. It breaks out into an argument and Will unloads a lot of bad things that happened to him as a kid. This explosion takes Skylar completely off guard and her heart breaks for him. 
but try as she might to reassure him that she loves him, Will shuts down, unable to comprehend that another human being could ever have these feelings for him. As a last act of self-preservation, Will faces her and tells her right there that he doesn't love her, which crushes Skylar. Not only is it one of the many scenes that shows off Damon's incredible acting, Minnie Driver's acting in this scene hits like a train. Her emotion, her mannerisms, they all align in such a way that you almost feel the heart breaking right there on screen. It's not just a one-off either. She's great throughout the whole movie and got nominated for Best Supporting Actress as well. Will's friends are the only constant he has. Chucky, Morgan and Billy are incredibly loyal to him, willing to have his back in any situation, regardless if it's justified or not. In short, Sean describes their friendship better than I can with this incredible line. No, listen, Jerry, and why does he hang out with those retarded gorillas, as you call them? Because any one of them, if he asked them to, would take a fucking bat to your head, okay? That's called loyalty. Will is so ingrained into his environment that the idea of leaving and making a better life for himself is unthinkable. He imagines growing old, having kids, and being neighbours with Chucky, and them taking their kids to Little League. To which Chucky finally gives in and tells Will some harsh truths in a scene that perfectly catches the love that Chucky has for Will. Ben Affleck's delivery of his monologue is impressive. With simple but snappy language, Chucky rips into Will, telling him that with the gift that he has, it would be an insult to him and everyone else if he's still hanging around here in 20 years. At the expense of his own feelings, Chucky lays it out simply for Will to understand and doesn't hold back. The last thing Chucky wants is for Will to leave his life, but he knows that if he doesn't do something with this incredible talent, it would be a fucking crying shame and he feels he has an obligation as his best friend to point this out to him. And now for the big one. Robin Williams gives a performance of a lifetime as Will's therapist, Sean Maguire. There's this incredible and inviting warmth to his character that just hooks you immediately thanks to his smile, his demeanour, his voice and his subtle humour. Their first meeting is a sparring match. Will, after successfully driving all the other therapists away, thinks he's got this win in the bag. He struts around Sean's office, poking fun at his occupation and putting his foot down in his domain. But Will has never had a sparring partner quite like Sean. Sean counters every move that Will makes, and even lands a couple of good metaphorical hits too. Nothing too heavy, just enough that says, you've got good defence kid, but I've got some skills too. As this exchange continues however, Will spots a major opening and goes for a knockout blow. He spots a painting hanging in the office and starts the reverse psychology on Sean coming to a conclusion about his wife. Sean immediately shuts it down in as much of a professional manner as he can given the subject, but Will knows he has his teeth locked in and he continues. When he oversteps the mark, Sean loses it, grabs Will by the throat and makes himself very clear on the matter. If you ever disrespect my wife again, I will end you. I will fucking end you. Got that, Chief? After their first meeting, Jerry assumes that Sean won't be going any further with Will, but Sean tells him he wants to see him again. At their next meeting, it's Sean's turn. He lays it all down on the table, and while he respects Will's intellect, he drives it home to him that he knows next to fuck all about what the world truly has to offer. It's a mesmerising monologue from Robin Williams, who delivers it with such heart and wisdom. And for their characters, it's this point where Will doesn't have any smart comeback or rebuttal. He just sits there and he listens. There are numerous other scenes that I could go deeper into, which is testament to how gorgeous and rich this film is, but the one scene I want to finish on is the final therapy session that Will has with Sean. They've come a long way in the time that they've had together. Will has finally reached a place where he feels comfortable in Sean's company, and Sean has learnt a few things about himself from Will. Sean's reading Will's file, and we get a glimpse at the abuse that Will suffered for most of his young life. Will asks Sean if he's ever had any personal experience with it, to which Sean says yes at the hands of an alcoholic father. Sean then takes a brave step. His following actions will either galvanise Will's healing or break it. With four simple words, Sean tells Will, it's not your fault. Will is almost dismissive of the comment, but Sean persists over and over. It gets to the point where Will is teetering on the edge of becoming violent or finally letting out all of the hurt that he's suffered all of his life. With one final, it's not your fault, the two men embrace, and Will finally releases the pressure valve, spilling out years and years of pain and trauma. His initial healing is now complete. He now knows he can trust another soul and that not everyone in this world is out to hurt him. 
It's the scene that the whole film has been building up to and its payoff is simply outstanding. I've spoken a great deal about how good the script is, but I definitely need to note Gus Van Sant's directing. It's magnificent. His framing of his shots is pinpoint accurate, especially during the therapy sessions. It's intimate and close and it gives you this feeling that you're right there with them. I particularly enjoyed the scene where Sean is telling Will about the night he met his wife, and it's intercut with footage from a historic baseball game that Sean should have gone to that night. Van Sant's camera work widens up to allow for Robin Williams' huge energy as he runs around his office, depicting the events of that game. The whole film is expertly shot and it's easy on the eyes. Premiere did a list of the top 20 most overrated films of all time, and Goodwill Hunting made that list. Now films are an art form, and art is subjective, so there's no right or wrong when it comes to liking or disliking a film. But as you might have guessed, I adore this movie. It's a film about friendship, trust, love, loyalty and healing. It made me laugh, it made me cry, and it made me root for all of our main characters. It teaches us lessons about life and reminds us to take notice of the small stuff that's around us, because oftentimes they're the most important. Goodwill Hunting is just an amazing film and I cannot praise it enough. If you've not seen it yet, please go and watch it.